Ramirez Ramos, Fire and Life Safety Education Specialist for the Mesa Fire and Medical Department. Welcome to What's on Fire. In this edition, we'll take a look at one of our number one reasons for response in the winter and spring months, falls and injuries. We'll also learn some valuable safety information and learn about our home safety inspection program. Then we'll take a look at a new state-of-the-art machine that helps improve a patient's breathing. But first, the use of synthetic drugs, also known as bath salts and spice, is on the rise in our country. According to the 2012 Arizona Youth Survey, one in 10 youth in our state are using a synthetic drug. And here to discuss this matter is Stephanie Siete, the Director of Community Education with Community Bridges, and Mesa PD spokesman, Tony Landato. Thank you both for being here with me today. Thank you. Thank you. Stephanie, we have some examples of synthetic drugs here. Can you tell me a little bit more about them? Sure. Um, a lot of people are hearing about spice and bath salts. And the things I want to clarify are a lot of people associate spice with marijuana, and it's definitely not marijuana. Spice was actually created here in our country through a research grant. Um, a professor at Clemson University was, he was awarded this uh, study to look at the effects of marijuana on the human brain. But Interestingly enough, in the study, they asked him to create alternative or substitute chemicals, and he did. He created over 400 chemicals. These chemicals now are known as spice. So what you'll usually see is plant-based material sprayed with all these different compounds. And again, there's over 400 different compounds that are sprayed on there. And as a result, it never really ended up like marijuana. It started to be more of a stimulant-based substance, delusions, hallucinations, heightened blood pressure, temperature, and heart rate. And that's the spice or the marijuana-looking substance, not the same effects. Bath salts, you know, you hear that name, and I think a lot of people think, like, from a store, you know, can I go pick this up over the counter? The bath salt name is, is confusing. It's really a methamphetamine-based kind of substance. Bath salts have been prevalent in Europe for a good six or seven years and they've got a lot of methyl or meth chemicals in them, and they're the ones that you're hearing, the news is getting a lot of attention out there when they're talking about people being um, aggressive and violent and mean and attacking and running around naked, that usually gets attention, but there's a lot of interesting stuff happening with bath salts and spice. Just the behavior is really unique and different. And Tony, I think the thing for the police department is that these makers of synthetic drugs can manipulate them just enough to create a legal product and that can end up with some very interesting side effects that you probably see on different calls. Well that's correct as first responders we're the ones that are called when the person is you know directly under the influence of these drugs and this isn't a situation where you can calmly talk with someone who's maybe upset or angry this is a situation someone's again under delusions these type of things so we literally are having to go hands-on uh, get them under control safely so that we can get them medically evaluated and then begin an investigation as to exactly you know what is going on. We're usually called once uh, either just the bizarre behaviors that are uh, follow these drugs or uh, they've assaulted somebody or damaged property, this type of thing. And we're the first ones to go out and try to get that scene under control that, so that we can again find out what's going on with them. And Stephanie, as scary as all of those side effects sound, what's scarier to me is that it's legal to be sold in a store. And that's something to really clarify, that it is legal. People hear that these are banned chemicals. They are. Certain chemicals are banned, but the substances are still legal. You know, you can go on the internet, you can go into a convenient mart, um, some gas, gas, what I want to say, gas stations, mom and pop shops will sell these as potpourri or incense plant fertilizer, insect repellent, you know, it's, it's code words. Just like bath salts is a code word. Mm -hmm. So people are thinking they're getting a salt or a fertilizer or they're pretending, you know what I mean, that that's what they're getting. And then you'll see these packages where it says, not for human consumption, 
So they, they're covering themselves. But then you go online, that's another thing too, is you can go on the internet and see how to do it, and people are smoking it, snorting it, injecting it, cooking it. So we've really just gotta be informed about what this stuff is and what it does, and just be just in the know is really what I would say, because some people are so misled by looking at this and and thinking basil and thinking marijuana and downplaying it, and it's it's not. And is there any one particular particular demographic or a trend that you can talk to us about who's maybe using these synthetic drugs? Sure, as you said, Arizona Youth Survey, um, we look at Arizona Youth Survey every two years, our 8th, 10th, and 12th graders. So the data that just came out is fresh data, 2012. It said, you know, 1 in 10, but specifically in 8th grade, the numbers were closer to 7%. Our 10th graders, the numbers were around 11%. And our 12th graders, it was nearly 14% of them using. And people are going to say, well, those are kind of low numbers. That's the first time they've actually captured data. It's the first time they've asked about it. And it's showing significant use. And any use is bad use. You know, you look at our, our ER numbers. 2010, uh, the Dawn system, the drug, um, drug, I think it's Drug Awareness Warning Network, all these acronyms, came out. But I do remember the number. Over 11,400 individuals were hospitalized in the ER for spice alone. Mm -hmm. Spice alone. And I would assume just by the numbers that you said with some of the youth starting in ninth, 10th, 11th grade, that number seems to be increasing as they get older. Some of these could lead to um, non-legal drug use. It, it could be a start in a bad path. Legal or illegal, you know, I always tell people legal doesn't mean safe. And I think a lot of young people go, well, I legally purchased it. It's, it's legal to use. That doesn't mean it's safe. There's so many unknown side effects with this stuff. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, it hasn't been around long enough to know any results, any effects, any damage. And every time you're altering chemicals, this batch might be different from that batch and the next batch. So you never know what you're going to get as a result of using this stuff. Again, it's a lot of young people using it. These numbers that we're looking at with the high school students is one population, but a majority were between the ages of 12 and 29 years of age. So it's a very young population. And then, as Tony had stated, you're hearing a lot of this crazed behavior out of control, and it can last for days. In some cases, we've seen stuff where people are still under psychosis and effects months after they initially used it. So the drugs are definitely altering their state of being, permanent brain change, scary stuff. So what would be some of the things that we can do to go ahead and fight against these synthetic drugs? I always smile because education, you know, I mean, so many people, we always have this, I oversee this synthetic drugs task force here in the East Valley, East Valley Synthetic Drugs Task Force. And our slogan, educate and eliminate. First, get people to understand what it is, and then they're going to, once they know what it is, they're going to want to help us eliminate this, work with legislation, work with the schools, work with first responders, getting the message out there um, to identify the signs and symptoms, to change the legislation, to stop just banning chemicals, but make these illegal substances, get them out of the hands of our young people. That sounds like it's one of the biggest things is the education that knowing, like you said, just because they're legal doesn't make them safe. And then I would think that seeing some of those side effects that you talked about, Tony, would help in that understanding of the education. Well, that's exactly right. I mean, we've seen examples across the country of some of these drugs. I mean, uh, very violent acts. I mean, in some case, deaths of innocent victims that are attacked by folks under the influence of these drugs. And just to echo what Stephanie was saying, with I think a lot of our youth will, especially with spice, you know, they're equating it. Oh, well, okay, it's kind of like marijuana, just like smoking marijuana. So I think it's important to educate them. No, it is not. Although it may look like marijuana, it may be used uh, in the same fashion as marijuana. The effects are much, much more extreme, and nothing like marijuana. And that alone, right there, I think is is just the most important thing: the education about it. And is there anything that you would like to say just to wrap this up, Stephanie, a last point, sure. the most important um, thing? Sure. Again, this is a great opportunity for people to get a little bit of information. They could always call, you know, um, different agencies, including ours, Community Bridges. You know, we're out there to help educate people. We treat it. But go online. Go into some of these books. Read about this stuff. Know what it is. Don't think, mm -hmm. oh, you know, my kid graduated high school. I don't need to know it anymore. It's a community problem. So um, the task force that I mentioned, we open that to the public. People are welcome to attend that and learn more and get the resources. 
and try to fight this. Thank you both for being here with me today and for discussing such an important subject. Thank you. Thanks. If you or someone you know needs help in recovering from synthetic drug use, you can contact Community Bridges at 1-877-931-9142 and you will speak with a certified peer specialist. Coming up, we'll learn more about our home safety inspection program.